Okay. Thank you. Welcome uh, to I love it. I love it. <laughs> Welcome to my little assistant helping um, with the uh, electric vehicle. Um, this is uh, bodywork for a um, hybrid electric vehicle. It's going to be a category L7E, um, which is 350 uh, kilos in weight um, and a 15 kilowatt power source. It's designed, yes, it's designed as a three seater. Um, now we've used styling elements from a number of um, cars dating back to the 1930s and 1950s, as well as modern sort of things to get a sort of a more modern look. As if you if you recall, the reason why some of the styling elements were used in um, in uh, early cars was because they were engines were not particularly efficient. So that's what we've got to include here. Now, the, so the. the Come on, think. We were doing the filming of the camera. There we go. So um, you can see we've got the the classic um, old style um, thing, running board, and um, we've got deliberately got the gaps around the uh, things that this, the um, the wheels to get the airflow around the bonnet, um, and also at the back there as well. Um, originally, we did actually push these two wheels inwards, um, but the we couldn't get the airflow going around to get that ideal teardrop shape um, on the uh, thing. Ironically, the uh, bodywork shape is um, better. <laughs> My assistant helping is better uh, backwards than, uh, than closer to the ideal teardrop shape backwards than it is forwards. Um, that's okay, Lum. That's all right. It's okay there. Right. Um, we want to particularly want to get that sort of a um, <laughs> boy racer. Um, look as well, a modern sort of boy racer look. It's okay, sweetie, you can leave it there. Thank you, my darling. Um, now, gurgly, gurgly, yes, love. Um, we also didn't want to get a um, the traditional sort of uh, forward facing thing because it's just so boring. We wanted a sort of more aggressive um, forward facing uh, look. Thank you more aggressive forward facing look which on this we haven't filled in here and put a covering on these parts here but we can put a, a lattice work for safety reasons, <coughs> safety reasons yes um, and um, uh, things whilst also remain main, maintaining the aerodynamic shape as well um, so now <coughs> yegly, come on I think. now um, what we found was um, that as the airflow goes over the top here it comes and comes around and joins with this and creates a vortex here. So again, we put the running board on to to stop it going that airflow going underneath the car, um, but more to catch it and to direct it up round um, <laughs> to here so that it would go into there. Now the interior, right here, we can see we've got three. You can actually get three passengers in, right? One, one's at the back as well. You can just see the head of the one that's fallen over at the back. Um, and the, the shape here, um, you can see how you can actually get three people in one of the thing. Now this width, the width of the vehicle here is uh, one meter on the top, um, which means um, when we put these doors in, we deliberately put um, scoops in so that the shoulders would fit psychologically fit you'd be able to put your elbow on the thing um, but also you can get a, a side impact protection bar into the thing to fit against the the roll cage which would go inside um, or go in the space frame inside um, so again from the front gurgly um, you've got um, again with people sitting here it's curves in at the top so that um, you can see, uh, that so that it's not sort of like smacked against people's heads. It's not upright um, uh, like it would be in a traditional car, um, but you've definitely got space for people's heads. And likewise, at the back, we're able to bring the things in as well and maintain that um, teardrop-like uh, shape. The back, um, the, there's room here to put either a gearbox or the um, or the thing. This is the, on the only bugbear really in the in the. Uh, design the aer aerodynamic um, shape, um, which uh, we've really got to um, address. Which, considering putting in, cough, cough, considering putting it in to a um, front wheel drive in order to be able to lose this axle as well and just have two supporting arms on the back here, I think it's still 
One of the other ten ten yes. <laughs> One of the other. Now, there's there's space because if you don't need that need that much to um, because you don't think you can tell this kind of things I've been doing with my daughter, can't you? Um, because it's no, you don't need that much power, um, you've got room to either put a, a front wheel drive. Um, here and put the electric motor in here with the with the gearbox underneath the bonnet here and then have the diesel generator and the batteries at the back um, in that box in that box in the space behind the um, back, uh, rear uh, rear passenger um, or to have it the other way round to have a completely rear wheel drive and have the diesel generator underneath the bonnet at the front um, so that we haven't um, uh, decided but both are an option and the thing is that because it's so because you're only doing um, a, uh, a 15 kilowatt target you've got really tiny uh, thing. You could use a Suzuki um, Suzuki uh, Alto or a, a Fiat Seicento uh, gearbox. And that's not a problem. Now, um, what I wanted to demonstrate was the was the aerodynamics of here. The thing again, we've made a homemade homemade wind tunnel and um, uh, homemade wind tunnel along with um, using some hairs. Believe it or not, it's very, very straightforward um, and shows the aerodynamic um, it's a thing. So I'll just switch that on. <laughs> you got another dolly. All right. <laughs> All right. I'm going to lift the camera up so you can actually see this clearly what's going on here all right you can see the just unzoom that you can see the airflow goes round the side here um, and those gaps, these gaps, so it's effort going into there, around the side here. Oh, it's really, oh, it's got caught on some of the tape. One of the disadvantages of using tape. Yes, love. Okay, now that you can see is pulling, pulling inwards there, around the back. By the time you get to the back, um, actually you've still got very good airflow coming around to back here oh, piece of tape tape will stuck again um, and there's one dead spot which is that gearbox thing which is the bug the only bug bear that's uh, really a thing but the, the airflow coming through behind the behind the behind the wheels um, is actually very good because it's coming through those gaps the side over the thing over here between the two here so it's actually quite good come on Zay you get baby love you get baby love um Yeah, mum's upstairs though. Okay, now the, the airflow over these, these wheels is actually very good. Again, you can see it goes through that gap there, again through the, through these, through these, up and round, yeah, and down there, I think. So it's all right, it's actually um, quite um, effective all around. Let's go, Weeby. Really? Yeah. Where's Weeby? Yeah. Put it back on the, back on the stand. And the other thing I wanted to show was um, what happens when you put this on on uh, some scales and actually measure the thing. So again, homemade. 
just using a pair of kitchen scales, running a cable up to them, and uh, measuring a thing. Now we've got a cardboard box, um, which we're using as the uh, cal for calibration. Um, rectangular boxes have a um, drag coefficient of 0.86. Um, long rectangular boxes have a drag coefficient of 0.86. Let's get that fully extended. Set the scales. Set the scales to zero for this thing. Okay, that's on zero. Switch on the fan. Pull it until it starts moving. Okay. Right, finding the airflow stabilised, you can hear the change in the fan. Okay, one second, all for that, get out of the way. Turn it back until it stops moving. And we have 30 grams on the scales. So, now we do the same thing with the car. Ah, let's take the dollies out because they're too heavy. The, uh, they'll get too much in the uh, friction from the weight of the with the passengers otherwise and we don't want that Ooh, coming out Put the doors back Put on the scales pull it until it starts moving <laughs> there we go Reset the scales. And switch on the fan. until it starts moving. 19, 18, whoop, 14. That's gone from 19 to 18 to 14. Let's try it again. Yeah, that's moved. 19, 18, 15, 14. <laughs> the thing. Okay, so it's roughly half. Right, now, this is a quick maths for you. That's good, that. that's better than the last time we did it. Um, this is, on our scale, is uh, 60 centimetres, oh, 600 mil. So that's almost a metre, and that's one metre. So this frontal area is about. Um, um, uh, 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 0.7 uh, meters, but the drag coefficient of uh, a rectangle is about 0.86, so it's about um, uh, uh, equivalent to um, 
equivalent to uh, an area which is about half a square meter. Um, this is half the uh, drag coefficient of that cardboard box, um, it's, uh, but its frontal surface area roughly is um, uh, thing is is um, 1.5 meters times 0.5 plus um, uh, 1. Point something 1.1 times uh, 0.6. It works out about 1.5 1.35, but it, it's a <laughs> drag co co coefficient. Um, works out at about 0.25, roughly. If you do the math sort of thing or use a calculator, work work with those numbers. Um, so uh, 0.25 meet, meets uh, the target, and of course that's very very roughly. Um, we can't judge that um, a thing except by actually creating one and measuring it or doing some sort of computer things, which um, is costly. Just one other thing. I think I just wanted to show you this. Dropped. Um, it would be absolutely brilliant to be able to have this louver grill on here um, for that um, styling. You can see what I mean about the styling look, but it's just unfortunately it was just too uh, too uh, a thing. Me. So anyway, um, the target is category L7E, um, which is um, EU type approved. Only costs um, if you actually want to get that. Um, uh, type approved as a manufacturer, it only costs you about fifteen to twenty thousand pounds as a manufacturer. If you were to try something else, it would cost you. Oh God, I don't even want to know. Um, at uh, quad bike, this category L7E is effectively a quad bike. Um, the limit is fifteen kilowatt um, power source. Um, I think and um, uh, three hundred and fifty kilos in weight, excluding batteries, um, which we're not going to use because we want to keep it down to under f under five hundred and fifty kilos including the passengers um, slim passengers you can tell that was my little daughter so she counts as slim um, uh, because then you can get or even with that 15 kilowatts you can get up a 25 percent gradient still at 30 mile an hour um, if you um, if you were to um, try and use the batteries in that as well you wouldn't be able to do it so um, there's quite a lot of um, strict um, things that we're trying to achieve here: drivetrain, drivetrain efficiency of 80%, um, which can be done with um, tradi traditional um, in-car um, engine, combustion engine, uh, drivetrain, the gearbox and the tra and the back axle, are between five and seven percent. Um, the um, uh, electric motors we can actually find uh, one from a company called MRAX uh, uh, from uh, Instro. Um, this is the MRAX motor that is 94% uh, efficient. It's an outrunner um, based on a German design because these guys got LRK Torque Max design. You can look it up on the internet. Um, and um, the bloody thing they've got a 12 kilo electric motor that can do 80 watt peak. Just stunning. You only do that for about two or three minutes because it overheats otherwise, but it's designed for light aircraft. Um, to get gliders up into the air so they can come back to glide back down again. Fantastic design. Um, at, uh, it has 200 newton meters of torque peak. Just amazing. Um, so which is which is m complete overkill for this, but it's the only one that we can find that's actually um, 90, 94%, 95% efficient. Most other electric motors are 90%. Um, uh, brushless DC ones at the maximum RPM. So we still need the gearbox um, in order to be able to achieve both getting up the gradient and doing 60 mile an hour um, that's fine um, we've got room for that in the in the in the either either end as a front wheel drive or as a rear wheel drive um, drag coefficient of uh, uh, 2.25 roughly frontal surface area comes out to a thing um, low rolling resistance tires you can get qu quite good um, uh, cheap um, eco tires with a 0.0007 um, uh, rolling resistance coefficient it's achievable. Um, make it, make a, um, make it in uh, fiberglass, um, and uh, then either do it as a, a kit car if we can't find it, if it's a manufacturer, or we'll take it to a manufacturer and get it done. Great. Um, thank you for listening.